Okay, this sermon's entitled, Teach Me Thy Way. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's open up with Proverbs chapter 1, the first seven verses it reads. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now jump back to verse 5. One of the main reasons why we need to be taught by God and to learn his word is because, number one, it says that a wise man will hear and will increase learning. The reason why is because it's ever-increasing. We can continue to learn, and, and it, there's no limit to it. So that's why I believe it's so advantageous to read the Bible and let God teach us. Now, let's turn over to, uh, first of all, let's go over and turn over to Titus chapter 2. Let me hold my place. In, in, well, we're going to go back to a, you know the Psalms and whatnot. But let's go ahead and turn over to Titus chapter 2. The very first thing I want to preface by saying is that whatever we are being taught needs to be correct. If a person's believing wrong, and if it's some false doctrine out there, then you don't need to be taught that at all. You need need to stay away from it. Like, you know, just completely avoid it. So turn over to Titus chapter 2, and let's start off with verse 1. It reads, it says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So we need to have sound doctrine. The word sound means it's logical. It's clear. It's understandable. It's not obscure. It's not nebulous. It's not, you know, obfuscated. It's not, you know, something that we just can't understand. So, number one, we need sound doctrine. Okay, now turn back to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 reads, and we're going to look at verse 6, it's very important to teach children the Bible at a young age. Okay, it's good to start young because, you know, then they'll they'll have more of a foundation in, in their, their learning abilities and whatnot. So look at verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. It doesn't say it doesn't say he may not depart from it. It says he will not. So that's it's very important to train up a child in the Word of God. Now let's go let's look at some some verses that talk about why we should be learning God's Word. And we need to understand that we need to have we need to have God teach us. The Holy Spirit will teach us the Word of God as we continue to read it. So let's turn over to Isaiah chapter 50. We're going to see some reasons why this is so important. Isaiah chapter 50, look at verse 4. It reads, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. So we have to understand that God wants us to be able to learn his word so that we can speak it, so that we can preach it. And then we see here that there are people that are so wearied in life, they're going through a lot of stress and a lot of problems, that they need to hear the word of God. That's why it says that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. So that tells us that we need to be able to, to teach God's word at all times. Now turn over to the New Testament. Turn to... Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, this is a very common verse, but it's very um, germane to the subject because this verse tells us that we need to um, be able to give an answer for what we believe. And it tells us how to do that as well. So turn over to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse 15. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, okay, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, those who are saved, we believed on Jesus Christ, and by God's grace we are saved. It tells us that we have hope that's inside of us. It's not some hope that's distant or some remote hope. It's, it's a hope that's already within us. And that's because the Bible makes it clear that we have, we have Jesus Christ inside of us, you know, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we have, we have eternal life. We, we possess it. So it tells us we need to sanctify the Lord in your hearts. In other words, we need to be giving God you know, honor. We need to be studying the Word of God. And then when somebody has a question, like some atheist or something, says, why do you believe that? 
you, you can give them a reason. Here's the reason, because number one, the Bible says we're all sinners. And that if you don't get saved, you're going to die in your sins, John 8, 24, and if you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell. But we don't have to go to hell because Jesus Christ is the Savior. He died in our place. So, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 talks about that he became sin for us, and then because he did this for us, we receive eternal life as a gift. And then once we're saved, we're always saved because it's an eternal gift. And that way you can have an answer to give them. So that's why it's very important to study the Word of God. It's because people need an answer. And that's why it, we have to let God teach us so that we can give this answer. Now turn back to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, let's take a look at a verse that makes it very clear that, believe it or not, gaining knowledge, gaining biblical knowledge, gaining biblical knowledge can actually give a person peace. Because number one, God has put us here for a reason. We're not, we're not here just to be like a bunch of animals who, you know, monkey see, monkey do, we just copy one another and emulate one another and we have no purpose. No, God has given us here, put us here and given us a divine purpose is what I'm trying to say. And believe it or not, the Bible makes it clear that learning and namely, learning the Word of God will give us peace. Just imagine somebody who's so unlearned and so you know, ignorant about everything, and then he goes through life with no peace because he doesn't know anything. So the Bible makes it clear that just learning the Word of God in and of itself gives us a sense of peace. And it's found in verse 13 of Isaiah 54. It says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. So, Notice it says, taught of the Lord. Whenever you read the Bible, it's God teaching. Okay, it's God teaching us. So now, let's take a look at some more verses on this. Another reason why it's so important to be taught, and before I get into this next verse, a person has to be teachable. They have to be receptive to God's teaching. And a lot of people are not teachable because they let their traditions, you know, keep them awry, and and they they let their traditions basically dictate what they believe, and that's a sad thing. We should never allow a tradition to have control over us. We should just be open-minded and look at everything like it's an open-ended, you know, tabula rasa, clean slate, and then from that point on, we can we can receive, we can gain, because we don't have any preconceived ideas to make our understanding of things off kilter or to keep us, you know, adamant or obstinate or, you know, impregnable to the truth. So that's why it's very important to have an open mind. So let's take a look at another verse. Turn back over to Second Peter. It's like we're playing, you know, Old Testament, New Testament ping pong now, but that's fine. Turn over to Second Peter chapter 3. And the main reason why it's important to learn is that we so that we don't fall into error. The, the devil's out there with his false doctrine and his false unorthodox, you know, dogma, and he's going to try to misinform people. And he's not just trying, he is misinforming people. He is getting people to believe wrong. So that's why it's so important that we, you know, continue to learn God's word, learn correct doctrine so that we don't fall for this. We don't go down the slippery slope of 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 skewed and false doctrine. So turn over to Second Peter chapter three, and we're going to look at two verses here. Number one, we see in verse seventeen it reads, Ye therefore beloved, seeing ye know these things before Beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own, from, from your own steadfastness. So what this is telling us is that anytime there's, there's false doctrine about, or anytime there's false doctrine out there, it's from, it's, it came from Satan. It's the error of the wicked. So he's telling us right there, you don't want to fall from your own steadfastness. In other words, be steadfast in what you believe. Now look at verse 18. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, it doesn't just say grow in grace. It says grow in grace. It means have your understanding of God's grace increase or augment, but it also tells us to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What this, what this is telling us implicitly is that the knowledge you have, it, it can you know, enlarge. You can grow in it. So that's why it's important that we keep learning more about God, more about Jesus Christ, and we can do this forevermore. That's what it's telling us. Now, let's take a look at a verse in Hebrews that talks about how to do this. Number one, we see an exhortation for people to continue learning God's word, and then we see like a, you know, a statement here that says that some of you, some of these people need to go back and relearn it again. And that's the way it is. If, if you get out of you know, fellowship with God, if you stop reading the Bible, you can get to where you have to, you have to relearn the material. So it says right here in verse 12, back it up to verse 11, it says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, 
or expressed, seeing ye are dull, and dull means slow, of hearing. It goes on in verse 12, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Another reason why we need to be taught God's word consistently, ongoingly, is because there is a discernment out there needed because of the the evil teachings out there, and we need this discernment so that we can basically separate the two. Okay, So that's why it's so important to learn God's word. A person who's unlearned is not going to know the difference between false doctrine and, and sound doctrine. They're going to mix it all up. And you know what? And anything, it's basically going to be anything goes with them. You know, you know, work salvation. No, saved by grace. They'll believe both. And that's why we need to have our senses exercised so that we can see the good and the evil and separate the two and then get rid of the, the evil teachings and just embrace the good teachings. So that's why it's so important that we are taught of God. So now, let's take a look at, let's see, Psalm 86. The name of the sermon was, Teach Me Thy Way. So we need to understand that it has to be God who teaches us. And God can use other, other preachers and pastors to teach his word. But the thing is, you have to take God at his word. You have to go by what the Bible says. If somebody says something and it's not in the Bible, or if it sounds a little bit off, you can't go by it. You've got to go by what God directly uh, teaches us. Now turn over, before we go to Psalm 86, turn over to 1 John. And God uses the Holy Spirit as the instrumentality to teach us. 1 John chapter 3, it, it reads, in verse 27, it says, But the anointing which ye have received of him, now notice it says, we have received it of him. So it, that means we, it comes from God. It comes from, from Christ. Okay? Abideth in you. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Holy Spirit abides in us. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now, number one, the Holy Spirit indwells everyone who's saved. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. You believe on Jesus Christ, and you're saved. John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Once you're saved, the Holy Spirit is inside of you, and it tells us that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. John 14, we see that. And it also tells us that the Holy Spirit never lies. Never. There is no lie when it comes to the Holy Spirit teaching you. If there's a lie involved, it came from Satan. John 8 makes it clear that Satan is the father of all lies. So that's, that's one thing we need to understand is that there's not going to be any lies involved if the Holy Spirit's teaching you. He's going to teach you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So that's why we need to watch out and be discerning and not fall for anything that seems like it may be you know, fallacious. So that's one thing I want to point out is when God teaches us, it's a perfect teaching because he's a perfect teacher. So now go back to Psalm 86. This, the title of this sermon is found in this verse. And I just think it's very important that people pick up their Bible on their own and read what it says. From, you know, read, it, read, it, read, it, read the whole thing. You, know, you could start from the New Testament and just continue reading. You know, just keep reading. And then let God reveal the truth to you. If all you do is go to church only every single week, you're under the, you know, basically, you're under the authority of your pastor, and your pastor may be way off. And nowadays, most pastors are way off because they believe in either Reformed theology, which is straight out of hell, or they believe in lordship, or they believe in Arminianism, or they're just a bunch of work salvation garbage. That's why it's very important that we, 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 we pick up the Bible on our own and read it and let God speak to us directly. And he does just that. Psalm 86, verse 11. Let's back it up a few verses. It reads, in verse 9, All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great, and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. And what this is telling us is that God is great enough, and God alone is great enough to teach us all things. Okay? You don't, you don't need man to teach you, as we read in First John. The Holy Spirit will teach us. And then it goes on to say in verse 11, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. Now, the key to this is that we ask God to teach us. We open up the Bible and we say, All right, I want God to teach me directly, and he will. 
And when when God teaches you, he teaches you, you know, correct things about everything. Number one, salvation is by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. Number two, we're et- we are eternally secure in Christ. Once saved, always saved. Number three, you know, there is a heaven, there is a hell, and we can learn everything the Bible has to teach us. You know, that we need to be preaching the gospel to people and evangelizing and and everything else the Bible has to say, you know, God will teach us in his word. That's why it's important that we, we let God teach us directly. And, you know, it's not we don't have to totally disregard what man says, but make sure that when a man is preaching that God is behind it. And if it, if it goes against what the, the scripture clearly teaches, then it's not of God, and that's why we need to ignore it. That's when, that's when we need to ignore it. So that's why it's so important that we let God teach us, because God does not fail, and God does not teach us erroneously. So that's all I have. The key is to just reading the Bible every single day. And I'm going to keep encouraging this because the reason why so many people are mixed up doctrinally or mixed up on certain issues is because they're not reading the Bible on their own. And they're letting tradition kick in. And tradition will, will never give you truth. So let's, let's close with a few verses in Mark chapter 7 that, where it talks about this. Tradition is what's messing people up. Mark chapter 7, we're going to look at a couple verses here. It says in verse 7, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Okay, verse 9, it says, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. So whenever you keep your tradition, it causes you inadvertently to reject the commandment or the words of God. So that's why it's so important that we totally stanch and totally destroy tradition. Get rid of it. Throw it out. Okay, now jump down to um, verse 12. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. So what this is saying is that it's tradition that makes the word of God of none effect. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we'll look at one more verse on this. And it reads that it's the wisdom of man that keeps you from believing God's word. That's why it's important not to listen to man if man is in error. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we see this concept right here in verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. See, when it comes to being taught by God, his wisdom is perfect. The wisdom of man is not it's, in, it's not perfect. That's why God's going to bring it to nothing. But jump back to verse 17. It says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So we see there that w- the wisdom of words is going to try to take the message of, of the Bible or the message of the cross and make it of none effect. That's why we don't need to be paying attention to what men have to say. Now there's one more verse that I want to look at. It says... In verse 21, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Now think about this. How does a person get to where they stop knowing about God? They stop learning about God. It's because they go and deviate, and they, and they, they start embarking in man's wisdom. And they start reading books that man wrote, philosophy that, that some man wrote a long time ago or whatever. It's going to cause you to depart from God's clear teaching. That's why it says, the world by wisdom knew not God. So if you want to know God, you have to shun or askew or repudiate the wisdom of men. Because the wisdom of man is contrary to God's word, and that's why we need to get rid of it. You can't mix a little of man's wisdom in with God's word and say, well, it's all true. That's why you have you know, people believing extra biblically, and they don't, they don't adhere to sola scriptura. And it's a sad thing. So what we need to do is focus on what God says alone, because God is the one that can teach us, and anything we need to know, anything we need, we, we need to, that God wants to teach us is in the Bible. So let's close with one verse on that. <clears throat> Turn back to Luke chapter 1. The Bible was written to give us wisdom and knowledge. It says in verse 1, now the key though is the key is to have faith. If you don't have faith in what you're reading, if you don't have faith in what the Bible says, and a lot of people don't, anyone who thinks you can lose salvation does not believe the Bible. Anyone who believes Calvinism does not believe the Bible. And anyone who believes any other ism does not believe the Bible. So it's key that we believe what it says, and because of our faith, 
God gives us the understanding that we need. So let's look at four verses here that talk about this. The first four verses in Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. See that? Whatever the Bible's telling us, we need to believe it. Even as they delivered from unto, uh, unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So God uses ministers of his word to teach people. That's, that's key right there. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, verse 4, that thou, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast instructed. So what this is telling us is that God wants us to know for certain what we believe. He wants us to know for certain that we're saved. That's why it says in 1 John 5.13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And then he wants you to know for certain everything else the Bible says. It's not a guessing game with God. It's not, oh, I hope they get, I hope they, they scratch the surface in, in their learning. No, he doesn't want that. He wants them to have a, a perfect, clear, sound, cogent, lucid understanding of his word. And that's why his word, you know, Number one, it doesn't contradict itself. Number two, it's clear and it's easy to understand. So the Bible is, makes it very clear. I get so sick of people saying, you can't know everything about the Bible. Well, you know why you're saying that? It's because you don't read the Bible personally, and you don't know squat about the Bible. But you know what? The one who does read it diligently, the one who does study to show thyself approved, the one who does let God teach them, the one who does let the Holy Spirit teach them, can know everything God wants you to know about his word. And you may not know it this, you know, in this lifetime, but we're going to learn it in heaven as well. So that's why it's important to be taught of God right now and to learn and to grow in grace and to draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And I feel like it's important to do this in this lifetime. So that's all I have. And that's my exhortation is for people to get into the word and to start learning it and to learn as much as you can. And God will teach you everything you need to know. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for giving us salvation by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.